Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. And topping the list tonight, the end of a manhunt for a homicide suspect. Tonight, the suspect being brought back to Knoxville. U.S. Marshals saying that Juan Carlos uh, Perez was taken into custody about two hours ago. The search had led investigators from Knoxville to Oak Ridge, where they found the victim's body in the bed of a truck. Earlier in the day, Knoxville police identified the woman killed as Cicely Perez. Now, we're told she was 18 years of age, and police believe she died from blunt force trauma. 6 News reporter Ella Wales was with law enforcement agencies for the conclusion of the search. Shortly after 5.40 p.m., we learned from the U.S. Marshals that Juan Carlos Diaz Perez was captured and arrested near the Oak Ridge Quarry. The 20-year-old is being charged with first-degree murder. This all started yesterday afternoon when KPD responded to this home on Mercer Street after a report of a man injuring his girlfriend. When officers arrived, the suspect and victim were no longer at their home, but evidence suggested a potentially deadly assault. Perez left the home in his white pickup truck, which was then located here in Oak Ridge, along with the victim's body. After a all day today, the U.S. Marshals Smoky Mountain Task Force did locate him, and again, he is being charged with first-degree murder. In Oak Ridge, Ella Wales, six on your side. Ella, thank you. Juan Perez faces a charge of, again, a first-degree murder, and at last check, the U.S. Marshals Smoky Mountain Fugitive Task Force told us he was being brought back to Knoxville. Of course, we'll keep checking for updates and bring them to you tonight at 11 o'clock. Our next big story, another day of pop-up storms. It all depends really on where you've been today as the deciding factor on whether you actually saw any rain. But at least two Kentucky counties in our viewing area are under flood advisories. Let's turn now to meteorologist Margo Allshuler to find out where the rain is falling or if it's pushed out. Margo. Well, Bo, we have seen a lot of rain today and still seeing some showers. Uh, we do still have that flood advisory for McCreary and Whitley counties in Kentucky. Now, a lot of that rain has moved out and actually moved towards Knox and Harlan County, Kentucky. Uh, this is close to Cubage, Oaks, Insole, uh, even close to Wheeler in Kentucky. We're seeing some heavier pockets right there. Again, we're watching for those heavy pockets because they do uh, have the issue of possible localized flooding in those areas, especially if they've been run over by rain for a long period of time, which a lot of these areas have. Closer towards Campbell County near Cumberland View, Campbell County High School and La Follette, we're seeing some heavier showers there. You can see the deep reds at the moment still continuing to trek east. This storm system was actually in Morgan and Scott counties just a few hours ago. And one last stop for us in Fentress County in East Jamestown and just close to Jamestown, we're seeing very heavy showers there as well. We'll continue to keep you updated on those pop-up storms, but a lot of these storms should clear out of the area as we head further into the evening. And again, we'll keep you updated on possible localized flooding as it does continue to be a concern as we head on into the rest of the week. Bo. All right, Margo, thank you. Our Big 7 list rolls on now with an unsettling discovery at a Knoxville church. That's where a man turned up with stab wounds, prompting the investigation that led to finding a man dead from stab wounds not far away. According to Knoxville Police, a man showed up to Cokesbury United Methodist Church around 11.45 this morning, again with stab wounds. During their investigation, officers ended up finding another man dead in the area of Kingston Pike and I-140, just a few blocks from the church. After this finding, we're told the injured man was detained for questioning. At this time, we're told there are no other suspects, but this investigation is still in its early stages. Next, we go to a big investigation after a deadly accident on the job. State workplace safety officials are now looking into how a lineman for Appalachian Electric Cooperative died this morning in Rutledge. This happened around 920 this morning in Granger County. We're told Appalachian Electric had crews installing a new service in the area, and one worker made contact with the electric line. We're told crews on the scene began providing life-saving measures and called 911. The lineman was rushed to Morristown Hamblin Hospital but did not survive. The state and federal occupational safety and health administrations responded to the scene to investigate. Now, Appalachian Electric Cooperative's general manager has since shared a statement about the loss saying, quote, today we lost one of our fellow AEC family members and this tragedy is felt by everyone. He continued saying, quote, we mourn the loss of our colleague during this incredibly difficult time. A big answer in a fatal shooting now as a Clinton police officer has been cleared. We managed to get a copy of the district attorney's memo coming out of the investigation showing that while it was a police officer's bullet that killed Isaiah Hill, he would have died anyway because he had already slit his wrists. The memo shows that police had been called to the home on Madera Street by a woman whose grandson was suicidal. 
It points to witnesses who told police that Hill darted at the officer or chased him carrying a large knife. The officer fired two shots at Hill, with Hill reportedly saying he wanted to die. While the officer tried to give first aid, making similar statements to EMS. Hill did later die at the hospital. An autopsy found Hill had slit his wrist and lost a substantial amount of blood before the shooting, severing his arteries. Now, wounds that the pathologist believed would have resulted in him bleeding to death. District Attorney Dave Clark writes in his memo that no charges will be filed against the officer. Clark goes on to write that he finds no fault with the officer's performance, describing the situation instead as a trap and blames Hill's death on mental illness. Rounding on our Big 7 list for you tonight, investigators in Alcoa have been busy conducting a sizable prostitution sting this past weekend. According to Alcoa police, this past Saturday and Sunday, the Criminal Investigations Department identified nine people involved in prostitution. Seven of them were arrested and were told two were identified as human trafficking victims and offered help. According to the TBI, human trafficking is the second fastest growing criminal industry. If you or someone you know is a victim of human trafficking, reach out to the National Human Trafficking Hotline. You can call the number on your screen. It's 1-888-373-7888 or you can text 233-733. Knoxville police asking for help to solve a case that's remained unsolved for seven years now. According to KPD, 34-year-old Herman Bailey was shot in an Austin Homes parking lot back on July 23rd, 2017. He was rushed to the hospital where we're told he remained in critical condition until he passed away four days later. Now, there were apparently multiple witnesses to the shooting, but only one staying on the scene and talking with investigators. Based on, their, uh, based on their conversation, detectives believe that Bailey was in an argument with another man when multiple gunshots were fired. The suspect, described as a man with a large stomach who left the scene in a dark red four-door car. We're told in the days after the shooting, detectives developed a strong person of interest, but were not able to get any hard proof. Now, seven years later, and still, no one has been arrested or charged in connection to Bailey's murder. That's why police are now asking for people with information to please come forward. So, if you saw something, you saw the shooting, or know anything that could help out investigators in this case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers, the number 865-215-7165.